So I self-identify as a nerd, which means there's going to be a lot of graphs and a lot of science in this presentation. Uh, but as the, as the host just said, I think that a spark can really be understood as an idea. And this spark can fall on a, uh, in a, a area that, that won't catch flame. This happens. Uh, it could be dampened by uh, a lot of water being thrown on it, or it can actually ignite and start something that is so much bigger than the uh, sparker ever thought it would be. So I've stayed pretty busy. I just finished my PhD in September on the quantum photophysics of organic solar cells. That's not what my talk is on, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I actually think I just heard someone be sad about that. That was great. <laughs> uh, but I've been a climate activist for a couple years. And uh, because of this climate work, I've been out in the community talking about anthropogenic global warming and what it means and what renewable energy solutions there might be. And I was asked to give uh, a, another presentation very similar to this one in November. And this was when I found my spark. I gave a presentation on solar technology and what it can do for Rochester. Unbeknownst to me, I was in a very uh, flammable setting. So the mayor's office was, was in the audience. And I was called into City Hall four days later. And I had a choice. I could say, it was just a TED talk. It was supposed to be big and grand, and I said a lot of stuff, and you know, I'd, I'd do what you want with it. Or I could do what I did. I founded a nonprofit, November 17th, 2014, called Rock Spot. Rock Spot is the Rochester Solar Power Organization team. We are 37 people now, myself included, all volunteers, and we believe that the technology is strong enough and economically feasible enough that it can transform Rochester's economy and Rochester's poverty rate. So. Briefly, solar, this is what I've been working with for the last six years, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about how it works, uh, but when sunlight, when a photon hits a photovoltaic cell, that cell generates electricity. So the, the photon's energy is uh, transferred to, to, an, to an electron, that electron generates a current, and we're able to use that current to power things, like cell phones, or one-third of Bausch & Lomb's manufacturing capabilities. Solar is becoming incredibly interesting at a global level. So behind me here on the left-hand side, what you're seeing there are rising carbon emissions. And they're rising at a faster rate now than they did a couple decades ago. We're not slowing down. We're not stopping. We're actually making the problem worse. This is going to hopefully be resolved at the 2015 Paris Accords, where we will be required as a global community to switch over to renewable energy technologies and cap our carbon emissions. On the right-hand side, this is something called grid parity. That's where putting solar up on your house is going to cost you the same as staying on the grid, or less. <laughs> the important quote is actually the Deutsche Bank one at the bottom. So by 2016, that's next year, in every state but three, we will have reached grid parity right here in the US. So again, when you think about a spark and what it can turn into, this is, this is, this is kindling, right? Here in the US, there's a, a growing demand for energy technologies that will take us off of the grid. On the left-hand side, that red line right there, that is the rising cost of electricity. Those gray bars are the variable cost of the source. What this graph means is that no matter how inexpensive natural gas might be, or coal, or even solar, if we stay on the grid, our costs are going to keep rising because they're driven by transmission costs and fees. Right hand side, this is one of my favorite graphs in the world. You can, I'm such a dork. I have favorite graphs, okay? <laughs> what you're looking at there is the cost per energy unit for a bunch of technologies. All the ones down on the bottom, that's coal, that's oil, that's natural gas, they're low. 
They're low. The one that is streaking in from the top is solar. And we came in very expensive, very expensive. We are now competing with both natural gas and coal and oil. And this is just happening over the last 18 months, okay? Governor Cuomo has set up a financial situation here in New York where there's been about $2 billion committed to renewable energy technologies. And here in Rochester, we have a huge potential to take this technology and have it truly transform our economy and our lives. I put these two people up here because they saw a problem in society and they fixed it with revolutionary thinking. And that's what Rockspot believes we can do with solar power. We're gonna rejuvenate Rochester's manufacturing industry through our relationships with the national solar industry. This is gonna allow us to build a 100 megawatt manufacturing line which will create high quality entry level assembly line jobs for individuals living in the city limits. Second, we're gonna reduce poverty through these jobs initiatives and also by getting solar for every house in the city limits by 2025. This is 90,000 homes that we are going to solarize. We've been around four months so, I mean, I should probably retire, I guess, right? I'm done. We've gotten a lot accomplished. Uh, we have gotten a lot of media attention, which is great. We've formed some pretty important partnerships with groups like Bausch & Lom, RIT, NatCore Solar, uh, the Naval Research Lab, Rochester Institute of Technology, a uh, very nice letter of commitment from our mayor, lovely Warren. And uh, we found out... Oh, missing a slide here, sorry. Uh, we're, we're going to, <laughs> I call this an accomplishment to date. This is a 200 page document that's currently in process detailing how we're going to take Rochester from the minimal amount of solar it has now to solar for every home by 2025. We've already won our first state grant. So this is incredibly exciting. And this grant's going to allow us to solarize the southeast quadrant of Rochester. You see down here in the, in the corner, uh, this is one of our memes that we make. If you like Facebook and you like memes, you should follow us because we make a lot of these all the time. Uh, our city has such a huge potential for this technology to have a massive impact. This is our first project. So this is St. Monica's Church on Genesee Street. Uh, St. Monica is part of the Catholic Diocese. It is in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Rochester, and we're putting solar on it. This is going to transform the community and allow us to begin working with all the neighbors to help them get solar. The Arnett Library already has it. Wilson High School has some really amazing educational programs that we're working with. And we believe that the application of solar technology in our city is a direct way to have a major impact on the poorest individuals. What you're seeing here is a graph that is a bit depressing. <laughs> Our energy poverty for people living in this city that have an income below $15,000 is 20%. That means 20% of their income goes to their energy costs. This is identical to families in rural Kenyan villages. That is where we are at here. What can solar do? it can work to eliminate these costs completely. We are an ambitious group with very ambitious goals. And I have to say, I don't think that this could happen anywhere else but here. Because this spark was able to catch fire because of the people who make up this community. And the, the level of excitement and the level of support that we have received for this program continues to inspire me and allows me to keep fanning the flames as we move forward. Thanks very much.